Ooh, what is up, your eyes? Of course, welcome to my, our Mount Moon Battle Association Season 3, which is for of course the Scandinavian Southlands. And yeah, if you guys are new here, we actually was in the Season 2 in Generation 6 here. Uh, we did really well, we lost a big choke actually, which was super unfortunate because I'm pretty sure we could have taken it all home. And uh, it really sucks. Um, that said though, we are going to do a bit of, uh, hopefully, taking this home, of course, this season. Uh, this league is based on the UCL format, which, of course, you draft three Pokemon from each tier, and, of course, with 12 in total. So, for Generation 7, they actually did a bit of a guessing game with the NU, which one was supposed to be NU and whatnot. And that makes sense, since the NU, as of right now, is not even in its alpha stage. should be out, but haven't come out. So, hey, get on it, Smogon. We need you. So, anyway, I do tend to do really well in this kind of format, and um, the league itself has already started, but as I told you in the previous video, I've been falling a bit behind on the upload, so I'm trying my very best to, um, before, of course, since the season, as I said, started, uh, to explain myself and what I got, and of course, just talk about a team of interest, if you guys are, of course, interested in that. So, I think I rambled long enough, and we're, of course, going to go over every tier pace they got on of course on with we're gonna start with of course the obvious one the OU drafts so as you guys probably saw from the start of the video really we got Kieran B we actually had the first pick here and uh, usually that means that I would pick something like Mega Yanshi or Tapu Koku Tapu Koku is something I used in develop Pokemon leagues I felt that I want to try something different Kieran B has always been one of those Pokemon that I know will do really well with it considering of course my playstyle but Always, there have always been Pokemons that have picked before it. So this is the first time it's my primer pick. And my god, I'm going to look forward to using this Pokemon. It's it's so diverse. It's It can be so specific. And uh, it's for a for ice type, it's actually fairly bulky. It's one of those few Pokemons that do this really high HP stat. It definitely can take super effective hits onto it. And being able to roost, yeah, it's got pretty darn scary fast. So... Nothing to it, really looking forward to using it, and uh, yeah, I think my opponent's gonna definitely watch out, because this is definitely a Pokemon that I do believe do really well. Uh, then we have Tapafini. Tapafini solves so much. Ex excellent defogger, excellent typing, excellent bulk, um, superb call mind setter. So, just in general, nothing wrong with Tapafini, since it's one of those Pokemon that, due to the lack in recovery, it feels like it is underwhelming, but. I think that kind of saves it from not being uber in the end of the day because it is so well rounded as a standalone Pokemon and it does support Kirin B kind of nicely. Uh, one thing that is a big issue is because Mr. Train does nullify, of course, the likes of uh, Dragon Pulse and whatnot. But at the same time, it does also save Kirin B for any possible matchup where Dragon Attacks could be its primary move to be able to, of course, offensively attack it. So, yeah, I feel really safe with that in mind. Kirin B definitely stands out with a, such a superb defogger as, of course, Fini. Another excellent Pokemon that actually is a possible defogger, actually, is Kartana. Kartana is, by every sense of the imagination, uh, a Pokemon that is such a glass cannon, but my god, this is hard to stop once the ball keeps going. And it actually synergizes really well, as, of course, my Fairy Dragon and Steel Core goes. Now, it should be said, that it doesn't solve what I do believe Steel type should be doing, which of course is taking resistant hits and being bulky. It is bulky to some extent, but it's very specific bulk, and quite honestly, it is definitely solving a more offensive role. One good thing coming out of this is that Cortana is a fairy killer. It is speedier than every fairy in the game, and you most likely want to kill it with small strikes. So there are things going on here that make it a primary Pokemon to begin with, and I think just overall, my OU picks is definitely one of the strongest in this league. And they solve a lot of things together and are very likely to have a big influential of the overall results. I think if my opponent solves this core in general, they should be able to do well against me. But this is only three Pokemon. We got nine more to go and trust me, the next nine is to make sure that these guys can triumph naturally. So. Going, of course, onward to my OU, I was going to say OU, UU -U picks. In UU, I decided to be a much, much more diverse. I First of all, I want a really solid fire type. And while Arcanine solves a lot, Entei is more specifically my style, mainly because of Sacred Fire. 
it is one of those things that just hurts things a lot. Entei's move pool might be a bit of a lacklustering issue, but at the same time, extreme speed, a lot of attack, and just natural offensive um, cap caliber makes this Pokemon really, really well rounded. So, I do look forward to using Entei in this league, and I had it last season, it did really well there too. So, yeah, basically, Entei is my cup of tea when it comes to fire type, and I would really want it to higher tier one over the lower ones. The other one being, of course, the Crossman. The Crossman is sorted as a UU Pokemon here. Um, it is RU at the moment. It definitely is, but it's definitely going to be a UU mod in the future. I've been talking very highly of the Crossman. The Crossman is a Pokemon that it has a lot of natural pull onto it, but lacks the move pull to pull it off. It is a stealth rocker, though. It is one of the best ones in the game, mainly because it does have such a great defensive capabilities to be able to start rocks. So I wanted that to be a factor. And just in general, as I said, it, Necrozma is one of those Pokemon that I've been talking so well about. I really want to try this in action. I think it's a stronger Pokemon in leagues than it is in, of course, the, um, the tier format. So this is my time to shine. And naturally, you know, I like it. It's a very, very strong Psychic type. And um, it should do well. As long as Stabs is a factor and Dark type is not against me, it should do extremely well. And that's what we're going with. The last one is Heracross. I use Heracross for plenty of time. Um, bug type in general, really, really good in um, league format. Being able to be a fine type 2, yes, it is one of the best combinations in the game. And Heracross got something that Bustle does not get, and that is more speed. And more speed is always helpful, considering, of course, what type of Pokemon it is. And, you know, Moxie, Guts can actually absorb status when, of course, Phoenix is active, which is, of course, Mrs. Rain. Heracross got a lot of things going for it, but the main reason to get Mirror Heracross is to ensure that there are no psychic types that can actually thrive. Heracross' natural speed usually makes sure that bulkier kind of variants of, of course, um, um, such as, of course, Chrysalia, for example, is not able to, of course, keep itself around. And also, getting Heracross is an important factor to get getting the Necrozma. Since I got a Necrozma already, it's a major issue towards Heracross, since, of course, you can take his hits really nicely. So getting <laughs> Heracross is synergized with that, yeah, pretty darn good. Uh, definitely looking forward to using Heracross. I tend to use Heracross quite a lot, and it's not because it's a bad Pokemon. It's quite opposite. It solves a lot of things. It resists Earthquake. It has a broad move pool. It has a lot of abilities going on, but the move pool itself can be super specific. It gets knockoff. Uh, the main stabs are just up there with one of the best in game against Wolves, and it can bulk up. It is especially defensive. Yes, I can talk about Heracross for a day. It is one of the best diverse fighting types. And of course, bug types in any league format, and um, I am really happy to have this one around. But we also got six others, and trust me, they're just as impressive as I'm already getting it. Because on the RU side, we have Virision, Gigalith, and Jolteon. Virision here is basically to solve what Kurtana or Heracross cannot solve. And there will be games where Kurtana might not be needed. Or it might begin with Heracross, might not be needed, but I need any of these stats. Virisian Assault just that is a super speedy Pokemon. It can be such, of course, Kabelion R, especially or defend, or uh, I mean, specially orientated, which both are going to advantage. It also has a really high speed tier, 108. It's just up there with one of the best speedsters in the game. And good stabs. And of course, with C Focus Blast, this thing gets really scary. Um, so Virisian is a very easy pick for me to be taken. And since, of course, it is so diverse, it's. Um, it's just worth using. One of the more interesting Pokemon. I've never used it in the league format, so definitely looking forward to it. Same thing with Jolteon. Jolteon is one of those Pokemon that I think are better in leagues than it is in tiers. Uh, it has a very strong speed tier. It does have a pretty bad move pool, or not bad, but it's very reliant on hidden power to be able to not be overly checked or even countered to some extent. And um, yeah, I won't try to use this. Good speed tier. And the speeder is a very good factor because there are a lot of speeder Pokemon that can do well. And be able to force people to use Scarf is going to naturally actually force people to play a bit more offensively against me to try to check that. And I hope I can punish my opponents for it. The last Pokemon picked here was actually Gigalith. Gigalith is here for one reason. I've used Rhyperior a bit too much for my own good. So I really, really want Gigalith to get an honest chance here. And as you guys may or may not know already, Gigalith gets, of course, Sandstorm, which means that for NU, there are actually Pokemons there 
who can benefit quite a lot from it, since of course we have a few guys that I really like there. So from NU we got Swillow, Sandslash, and of course Garbordor. We're gonna talk about Sandslash first. I got, of course, as stated, I got the freaking Gigalith, and while it's an excellent stealth rocker, and of course defensively very, very scary, even offensively to some extent, it doesn't hold up too long of a candle. Its stamina is not that impressive, so using Pokemon that can benefit in sand was one of my primary ideas. And while Stoutland was on the factory here, I decided to pick a bit around that. It might actually change throughout, of course, this season, but Sandslash, your poor man's Excadrill, was making it. It is a very good Pokemon for its speed here. While Sand is active, there are very few Scoffers that actually can match that speed. And of course, it does get, of course, things like Knockoff to actually attack Spin Blockers. And also, of course, Poison Jab, Earthquake, and Stone Edge, Sword Stones. So it can become really, really scary really fast. While it isn't the strongest Pokemon around, it's still a Pokemon that has a strong, diverse move pool. And should you by that default do really well with Gigalith as its buddy. Now, Swellow, on the other hand, was actually one of those Pokemon that was surprised was not an RU here. Swellow, due to its buff, actually, in special attack with Boom Burst in mind, got really, really scary. And, um, yeah, it's a defonger if you want to use it like that. But for me, it's a U-Turner. It is a Guts Absorber. And it also is, of course, a scrappy Boom Burst Specs monster. And that is mainly we're going to use it for. Swellow doesn't have a diverse move pool, but... At the same time, if you have Boom Burst, you don't need to be diverse. You really don't. Because Swallow, in the end of the day, if, you doesn't have, if Boom Burst isn't cutting it, nothing will. <laughs> it is that simple. And the Facade set's still one of the greatest sets in the game. Uh, facade, Brave Bird, U-Turn, yeah, it does a lot. So, of course, with the Guts nerf, I was going to say, with the Flame Burn nerf, this set got even more effective, and I'm really going to look forward to trying to use Swillow. It might also be one of those Pokemon that, if dumped, going to be just Swillow for Stoutland, if I decide that the main nation idea isn't working. Now, with that said, our last drafted Pokemon is Garboldor, and I actually got him last season, too. Garboldor is a very, very good Pokemon for what it is, which is a very, very good poison type. Now, Dual Poison is usually what is the best in the game, but if you're going for Soul Poison, Weezing and Garbordor is up there with one of the best in the games. This one, specifically Garbordor, solves the Spike Station for me, it solves the Toxic Spike Station for me. It is a Stationary Poison type, which means that they also solve the Toxic Spikes against me. And against, of course, the Lights of Aftermath. It's super bulky, it has a very, very scary and very weird move pool with, of course, the like of Rock Blast and Bullet Seed. To name a few, or I mean Seed Bomb and, of course, Young Shot. And also get Seed Stockpile, so it's up there. Garboarder, really underrated in Elite format. And made a ton of sense for me because I actually need a Poison type. At least something to check fairies naturally, because that's something that Kartana will not do for me. Uh, outside of actually carrying it, it won't be able to take hits from them. But, yeah, that is actually my complete League draft. And as stated, there could be changes going on here with this team in general. The one stands out for me is, of course, that Swellow could actually be sacrificed for Stoutland. If it is so, that I believe that Swellow is not doing the job I wanted it to. Now, with that said, my draft is probably the strongest draft um, from actually comparing against everyone. I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy, but this draft is so well-rounded. If I was going to point like flaws with it, I would say that missing out on a ghost type and missing out on a dark type could be very, very bad for certain matchup. Mainly is of course that missing a ghost type means that I'm open for normal spam. Normal spam is something that people do not talk about, but I definitely think that that's a factor. Gigalith and Cortana can deal with some of it, um, which is mainly the reason I got Swellow was that I did not want to deal with something else spamming Boom Burst against me. Exploit is definitely one of those that could pull that off against me, so I need to watch out for that. I mean, Gigalith can probably take a few of those, but that's about it. Uh, other than that, I think another issue I do have is that Necrozma is going to fill a role which I'm not liking. It is a very, very good offensive Pokemon that could be forced being defensive. Um, that is also a factor that I need to wave around whether or not it's worth it. And yeah, outside of that, my, my, my OU UU core is, is easily the strongest thing about this team. 
um, the Nishin RU with Jolteon being a very high speed here, Verisium being a high speed here, and uh, of course Yaleaf bringing Sand is super super helpful for the NU Pokemon that drafted afterwards. Garbordor is it something that I don't believe most people handle naturally. I don't think people are ready to deal with Sand Slash in a Sandstorm. And of course, Swellow, as of course, Specs Burst Booster is uh, it's something that I don't believe many people naturally want to deal with in the long run. It is just one of those Pokemon that naturally pressure things. And that's what I want. If I bring in a weaker Pokemon, I want those weaker Pokemon to be able to benefit and force people to play differently to open up spaces for my OU and UU team in general. And that's kind of the charm when you play. And I really can't say this enough. When you play the format that is uh, league format and you're a hyper offensive player, you want to ensure that the main offensive Pokemons are not dependent on each other. They are dependent on the lesser Pokemons that are a part of your team. And um, I actually realized as I was looking for or looking around this team that my slowest Pokemon is Sand Slash, but it's also possibly my fastest. Uh, the next one to it is Necrozma with a what is a 78 in base speed, and of course Garbodor is actually kind of slow. But outside of that, my team is actually fairly fast. It is, um, I mean, God, there are so many Pokémon over 100 base speed that it's yeah, I love it. I say so many, I think it's like three, <laughs> four, four of it. But yeah, anyway, um, the benefit I see with this team in general is that I'm not. Um, the OU Pokemons that are really, really good here can rely on so many other Pokemons to pick up the slack that they could be missing. And um, I really like having a Sand possible team here. There are a combo of Pokemons here, of course, Gigalith and Sand Slash, that can definitely throw up some builds because you need to have that in mind when going up against me. Even if I don't bring it, you still need to factor that in because I can actually, with Sand Slash, pretty much destroy almost every team in the game. Mainly because Sandslash's move pool is, it can be super specific. And um, for likes, of course, dealing with um, Pokemon that could be Scarfers with Sandslash in mind, that could be very, very troublesome for a lot of Pokemon or players because, as stated, Jolton's gonna force Scarfer against me. If Sandslash is faster, it can also be even worse for Scarfers because being locked in and it's able to set up Swole Sands. Yeah, that's it. That's a GG right there. But yeah, that's pretty much my team analysis. What do you guys think? We, we can take it home this time around. I'm, I'm, I really, really think we could. Uh, I just don't need to, sh to suck at the end. Uh, I don't want to screw up, of course, the playoff. Um, we were up against really, really good players too, so that's not going to like change things. But I do believe my synergy as last season are really, really strong this time around. And if not even stronger, this team is probably one of the strongest teams I ever built. And the few issues I see are very, very solvable depending on the matchup I'm going up against. So, yeah, well, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching for this draft analysis. And, of course, looking forward to the games that comes out this Saturday. So, until then, of course, guys, take care. Bye.